Alhamdulillah wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ama ba'd. <clears throat> so on to the third lesson in our series about the Islamic creed. We've reached the point we were discussing the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to briefly recap Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah in accordance with the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in accordance with the Sahaba wa tabi'een wa tabi'a tabi'een we affirm what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms about himself we negate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates about himself in the Quran and we affirm what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam affirms about him and we affirm and we negate what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam negated about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam so we reach the point in chapter 9 where the Shaykh says, Allah the Almighty, uh, Allah the Almighty's exaltedness is from the attributes to do with his essence. And it is of two types. So this has to do with the exaltedness, the alu. Exaltedness of, the, of self, that is to believe that Allah the Almighty himself is above all of his creation. Ascended and he ascended above his throne. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, Ar-Rahman ala arsh istawa, and the characteristic of alu as well, all is mentioned in the Quran, in the authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself is above his creation. So he's separate from his creation. He's above his creation, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then also the second type of exaltedness is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the exaltedness in attributes, that is uh, Allah the Almighty is described with only uh, only described with perfection and his majestic uh, divine attributes that possess no shortcomings in any way subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just ascribes to himself that he is with his creation and this is of two types so ma'iya is of two types that the way in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with his creation this is incredibly important as even just uh, yesterday I was having a discussion with a, a brother and he was referring to, you know, going to America and living in a non-Muslim land. He, he's from a Muslim land and he was talking about making hijrah to a non-Muslim land. And so he said, and Allah is with us wherever we are. And I said, yes. And he said, and even a non-Muslim that is just, Allah is with him. And I said, well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, that the non uh, that the the Muslim, uh, the non-Muslim that is just, yes, a non-Muslim can be just, but a non-Muslim, <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't have the support of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may help them in certain aspects or give them uh, a victory in certain things, but the true way in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with uh, the, the, the ma'iyah that is khas, this is only with the believers. And so we're going to talk about this really quickly as the Shaykh mentioned. He said the general way in which Allah is with his creation, which means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sovereignty, his power, his knowledge, etc., encompasses all of the creation from the believer to the disbeliever, and nothing of their actions escape him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says, huwa ma'akum ayna ma kunt. That Allah is with you wherever you are. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then there's the specific way, the specific ma'iyat khas. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the specific way, it encompasses his help, his support, and his protection. That is only for those who deserve due to possessing the correct belief and patience and God fearfulness, meaning taqwa, that they fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fearful of breaking his subhanahu, his commands. And ihsan, worshiping Allah as is, as if you see him, and knowing that you can't see him, that he sees you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the specific ma'iyya. This is the ma'iyya khas, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with those, by with them, by supporting them, supporting the believers, supporting those who love him, supporting those who worship him alone, and who worship him properly, based upon the correct creed. And... The Shaykh went on to say there is no contradiction between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's exaltedness above his creation and his being with us. Being with his creation does not necessitate that he mixes with his creation or mixes with it or physically settles down in a place together with his creation. Absolutely not. 
So something could be high in and of itself and still bear the meaning of being with something. As the saying goes, we are still traveling and the moon is with us. So here, the Sheikh went on to say, to give an example, not making an example with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but just showing that something can be with something else and not physically be present. So as the, the Arabs have a saying, they say, we are traveling. So when the, a person travels, we are traveling and the moon is with us. That doesn't mean the moon is your company, that is traveling as your, you, you, you and your friend are traveling and the moon is your third companion. No, but in fact that you are traveling and it is uh, the night and you're traveling using the moon, maybe the moonlight as, as guidance to get you on your journey and, that, uh, and, and so forth. But in fact, the moon is not physically present in your, your company. So this is an example of how something can be uh, with you, but not physically with you. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiya Muhammad.